Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, in case you didn't know, you can also listen to our stories over on Spotify. We upload these stories regularly. Uh, now we upload them regularly. <laughs> um, generally speaking, I try to make it so that the podcast episode comes out at least a couple days after the YouTube episode of the same version, but I know some people prefer to listen on podcast format uh, rather than flip through YouTube. So head on over there to Spotify and look for Storytime with Uncle Reddit. All right, let's read some stories. Threatening to destroy company property. We have a handful of PCs we think that former employees didn't return when they left the company. Our inventory tools are lacking, which we're working on. We just had a list of PC serial numbers and nothing else. We managed to turn that into a list of 60 PC names with an internet connection. We're not interested in getting these PCs back at this point, we just want to make sure those devices are unusable as CYA for potential data loss. As long as the PC is connected to the internet, we have at least some limited management of it. We pushed a script to these PCs, forcing them to reboot and putting them in BitLocker recovery mode. Beyond getting a success or fail reply when a PC ran that script, we didn't expect to hear anything about these PCs. Today, however, a former employee called the help desk after her device locked. Let's experience her call through the notes the help desk tech left in a ticket. I don't know why I can't say that. Help desk tech. Blah, blah, blah. User is no longer an employee at company, but is still using company computer. Computer is asking for BitLocker recovery key. Declined to provide key as she's no longer a company employee. She has to be escalated to a supervisor. She's begun using the computer as a personal computer since employment ended. While waiting for the supervisor, she said if we did not unlock the computer, she would break it and never send it back. She has personal information stored on the computer. She hung up before supervisor was available. Escalating ticket to security team. To recap, this user never returned their computer after she left the company and further assumed it was hers to keep and use. Now that we've locked the device, she called the help desk trying to get it unlocked, then threatened to destroy company property on a recorded line if we didn't unlock it. The matter has been passed on to our legal department. I can't tell if the ex-employee is like an entitled person or they're just that stupid. Probably a little bit of both. What do you guys think? My first call of the day went kind of like this. Me. Hello, you're speaking to me at company, Fiber Broadband Tech Support. How can I help? Customer. My internet has now been down for two days. I made a complaint two days ago. I was expecting a call back. I was promised yesterday, but that never happened. So here I am making another complaint. Me. Okay, no problem. I just need to load up your account. Insert boring ID and verification process here. Fantastic, that's let me in. Let's have a look at the notes and see what's going on. Yes, I can see you called us two days ago, but there's nothing about an open complaint. Would you like to speak to... Customer. Typical bloody stupid. So that's another process they've broken. And this woman goes off. Well, oh, I guess I shouldn't have done the deep voice. And she's ranting about how much she doesn't trust us and how we don't keep our promises. And four agents haven't written anything close to what she's yelling. I find in her file that she still has a copper line. My job deals specifically in fiber optic lines, and I can't service her line at all. So I need to pass her to the other side, as it were, so they can fix her broadband. There's nothing I can do for her except look at her billing system. So I wait until she pauses for breath and try to tell her. Me. If I could just... Customer. No, don't you dare interrupt me while I'm speaking, so... And rant some more. Me. Listen, this is important. Customer goes on some more. Me. But you have the wrong number. Customer audibly deflates. So... Me. So I can't actually access the side of the system that would allow me to book you an engineer to actually get this fixed. If you give me a few minutes, I've taken detailed notes on the system. So I'd just like to have a conversation with a colleague over on FTTC Tech. We'll get you an engineer out and then they can pass you directly to their complaints department. Is that okay? Customer. You're effing useless, aren't you? <laughs> me. Do me a favor. Please don't swear at my colleague. I dial the FTTC extension. I do wish they'd learn to listen before wasting 20 years of their lives ranting at the wrong person. I know every company policy is different, but the minute she started yelling, I probably would have just mysteriously had a connection failure, especially after she said I was effing useless. That would have been it right there. I restarted it recently. 
User makes a ticket about their PC having all sorts of issues. I remote in and have her demonstrate. Indeed, can't even save a file without everything freezing. Well, she has two dozen Windows updates trying to install, plus a big one in queue. I open the software center, select said update, and tell her to install it when she has time. First hurdle, she doesn't know how to do it. I've already selected it for her, she just had to click install. Fine, I'll do it. Half an hour later, she writes me again, claiming the install is just preparing to download. Is that normal? Well, her PC is slow as hell, so I figured it might be normal. But I have been on this sub for a while. I get a sneaking suspicion. I remote in again and check. Time since system start, 42 colon 12 colon XX colon XX. That's 42 days. Right, restart your PC, it's been too long. I restarted it just a few days ago. I turn it off every afternoon before I leave with control alt delete. It's been running constantly for one and a half months now. Restart it properly. How do I do that? Afterwards, she writes on me again to tell me that her PC fixed itself now. You know, if you're gonna hire people and give them computers or terminals to use, um, teach them how to use them right. Honestly, the money you'd save in tech support by just having a really basic uh, introductory course, you know, power on, power off. Here's the numbers to call, give them a log. Here's the people to email. Here's how you really ask for help without ticking everybody off and acting really self-important. You know, simple things like that. I need a thing. It's a fine morning, just after Easter and everyone's getting back into the swing of work. The little angels have stolen the HDMI cables in one of our rooms, and I've just come back from fitting a new one. Outside the office door, blocking my access to the sweet caffeinated nectar is one of our more technically challenged staff members. The sort of person who thinks the computer's a footstool and turning the monitor off shuts it down. We'll call her Alice. Alice. I need a thing. Me. Okay, what sort of thing? Stringy thing? Mousy movie thing? Glowy thing? Brain transplanty thing? I be normal. Alice. I'm not sure of the words. You know I'm useless with technology. Whoa, boy, we're going to be here a while. Me. Okay, explain what you're trying to do. Alice. Well, we've got some speakers in next week, and we need them set up for a virtual interview thing with their faces showing. Me. Okay, so what do you need? Alice. We need a way to show the presenters up on the big screen thing. Teleconferencing software. It's got to be teleconferencing software. Me. Zoom? You need Zoom set up? Alice. Yes, we need something to show their faces on. You know, down in the conference room, there's that big thing that comes down, and you can show stuff on it. We need something like that. Wait, wait, wait. We're dealing with Alice. It's never that complicated. Me. You need a projector screen? Alice. I don't know. You use these technical terms too much. We're setting up in the cafe area, and we need something to show faces of the presenters on. Pretty sure that whistling sound in my ears is my brain cells packing up and moving out. Me. Yes, a projector screen. Big white thing. Goes up and down. You shine colored light on it, and funny shapes appear. Sometimes you have to bring yourself down to their level. Alice. Yes, maybe, I think. You think? Had me fooled. Me, you'll also need a projector as well. Alice, do I? I'm not sure. To me, a projector is something you put slides in. Oh my god. <laughs> is that blood coming out of my ears or just my brain cells ant marching down my collar? Me, yes, exactly the same thing, except instead of slides, you plug a computer in. Alice, oh, I wasn't sure what it was called. Me, a projector. It projects. Light comes out of it. Pretty patterns are made. Okay, I guess you'll need sound and stuff too. Alice. I don't know, we just need to set up the presentation. You'll need sound, Alice. I don't know why I asked. Me. If they're speaking, you need sound. I'll set it up anyway. So to clarify, you need projector, sound, and screen setup in the cafe on Monday morning? Alice. I don't know. Yes? Maybe? You're the IT guy. You should know. <laughs> oh my god. So not only should he know IT, he should be clairvoyant. You should be able to read your mind and know exactly what you need. Who sent this woman to set this stuff up? Somebody did that to you on purpose. Somebody was yanking your chain, I bet. Can't we just go home? So this happened yesterday at the office. I was in the middle of a Teams meeting with a new vendor when a colleague came in with an A4 note saying that the internet was gone. I was a bit confused as I was using Teams at the time and had perfectly fine internet connection. I explained and left the Teams meeting to investigate. Sure enough, missing internet was spreading through the building and people were starting to complain about it. After five minutes, I was pretty sure that either our fiber connection had been damaged, a construction team was digging right beside our building, or our ISP had some issues. At this point, people started talking about leaving the office for the day, 
as they could under no circumstances work without any internet. I told them to keep calm, have a free coffee break or something. After 15 minutes, the internet came back, but to my surprise, half the office had left for the day. The internet had been down for no more than 15 minutes, and half the office left? What the heck is wrong with people? The issue that caused the entire ISP to go down for 15 minutes, including their own website and phone system? Yep, you guessed it, it's always DNS, when it's not a printer. Edit, it's very interesting to see all the answers and the difference in culture at work here. I can see that a lot of the comments can't see the issue in leaving instead of sitting in the office waiting for the internet to come back on. My point in this is, because people left after 15 minutes, we lost two hours of production. The company pays us for 37 hours a week and expects us to be at the office for that. For 15 minutes, you can surely find something else to do. Tidy up the office, grab a cup of coffee, make a phone call, or make a hotspot with your phone. In Denmark, where I'm located, our employer pays us for the time we're at the office, not the work we do. I agree. It sounds like half of your company was just looking for any excuse to get out of work and go home. Like you said, there's always something you can do. Straighten up your own desk, whatever. I mean, surely that's your job to keep your work area clean. Uh, grab a coffee, take a break, grab a smoke if that's what you do, whatever. But to leave after 15 minutes? Yeah, that seems kind of ridiculous to me. Port forwarding fail. Hey everyone, I'm not a part of this sub, but I figured I'd share this fail with you. I'm helping a friend who just set up a home server with some port forwarding. Insistent that RDP be open from the outside. I explained that being a well-known port, it is attacked very often and should at least be changed to something different. He said he made the registry change and it was working with a new port. Me, working in IT for almost 20 years and not trusting people, decided to run an intensive TC port scan with ZenMap. To my horror, 3389 remained open. To which point I messaged him saying, 3389 is open. I can still RDP over 3389 and am receiving a login prompt for his server. Annoyed with my concern, he told me to stop looking at his network, which me, being the ass that I am, told him to fix it and I would stop. Well, I gave him some time after explaining why, again, it was a bad idea to have it on the default port, and I ran another scan. This time I was happy to see that he had indeed closed 3389. However, he opened up 389 and changes his listing port on the server to 389. I asked him if he indeed changed it, to which he confirmed my thought, and then I explained to him he just opened LDAP to the world. Thankfully, I think his changes to the listening port on the server broke any ability to access LDAP remotely, and frankly, I don't feel like testing it to find out. I need a glass of scotch now to dull the pain. I don't know much about network security, but I try not to have anything open to the outside world. Not like that, anyway. I don't even like using go to my PC, honestly, but, you know, I'm old. It takes me a while to catch on to things. Well, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed these stories, and if you did, please do me a favor. Would you consider clicking that like button down below? And maybe subscribe to the channel. And click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fact out with the beer telling you stories. See ya.